Oh, I get it. <laughs> I took the time to make a joke about a glove box. You're welcome. Hey guys, check it out. I just had a really cool idea for a new platforming video game. It would involve a pair of gloves like these, right? And what they would do is they would, they would go through this action-adventure platforming game, bringing objects from the start of the map to the end of the level, right? And they would go through a bunch of different worlds. Hmm, let's say six. Six worlds, okay? Now, <clears throat> all the good games these days have iconic supervillains designed to put obstacles in every step of your way, right? And I hear you, I hear you. Tyler, what's the bad guy going to be for this flawless, excellent adventure that you're bringing to us? Have no fear, my friends. Let me show you. Ugh. Okay, now, hear me out. What if, what if the glove had an evil twin, huh? Huh? Well, unfortunately, we're about 20 years too late with this idea. In 1999, one of my favorite games on the N64 released, Glover. Ugh, look at the condition this cartridge is in. The cartridge is dirty and discolored. There's sticker residue all over it, and Hollywood Video melted their name in the back of it. And I mean, ignoring the fact that I dunked mine into pea soup, who the hell treats their- Oh, that's much better. Okay, so before the game begins, I just want to take a moment to make a quick comment about the files. As you can see, there are six of them, and they each have three character abbreviations for their file names. Now, files can't be deleted, but luckily we can overwrite them with new games. But I do have one legitimate question. If files can only be three characters long, why give us characters like an apostrophe or punctuation? A space? Pretty ironic considering there's no space to use it. Numbers? I guess I could use them to store like a locker code or something. Alright, seriously though, let's name the file and move on. I don't want to get stuck up here. <laughs> okay, so a game like this has a pretty simple story. There's a wizard up at the top of the tower working on a magical spell, but something goes horribly wrong. The concoction that he's working on explodes, sending his gloves flying and him falling to the floor, presumably to his doom. One of the gloves lands in the potion, while the other glove gets thrown outside. This chain of events triggers a larger explosion, which sends the crystals at the top of the towers flying off in every direction. Luckily, Glover was able to save them all by casting a spell which turns them into rubber balls. Yeah, Glover. I've taken a ball or two to the face before, too. Pikachu, no! Yeah. Ow! So the game begins. We get some advice to try out the tutorial level from our friend, Mr. Tip. Mr. Tip, huh? There's a dick joke in there somewhere. Camera control? Okay. Walking and jumping? Okay. Bouncing the ball? Okay, wait a second. I'm sorry. Did he just say, negotiate the stairs? That is a huge typo. Then again, that's not even really a typo. They spelled the word correctly, but they just used the wrong word. I think they meant to navigate, but somehow got to negotiate. I love how they programmed a function for Glover to just simply give up on life. All right, Glover, get up. Let's negotiate these steps and get moving on. Glover's first world is Atlantis, and right off the bat, I can already tell you, holy shit, I'm gonna be arguing with these controls for the entire game. Oh, uh, full disclosure, the controls in this game are so bad and so unintuitive that I had to remind myself on several occasions to not make the entire video based around the controls alone, uh, so I'm gonna do my best. Okay, so, uh, Atlantis. Rolling around, dodging sharks, grabbing flags, called garabs. What do they do? Well, they give you points. Also, collecting all the garabs opens up a bonus level, which, uh, it's, it's, it's Frogger. And not a fun version of Frogger. So, no thank you. The ambient music is really relaxing. Here, listen. Good, right? It's a pretty nice trade-off considering our first level is a water level. Okay, no! Listen up, Hasbro Entertainment! You do not, you do not start us off 
on the water level, okay? That's like that's like going to the hospital and be like, hey doc, got a bit of a fever. You don't have any idea what could be going on with me? So he knocks you out and sticks a camera up your ass just to find out what's wrong with you, okay? Because water levels are a pain in the ass. That's what you're doing to us. That's what you're doing to us. Anyway, there are two ways for you to lose a life. The first way is the classic way. Take too much damage and you die. The second way is if your ball takes too much damage. Yes, your ball can take abuse. Oh shit. You can tell how much damage your ball is taken by these bandages. If it drops out of bounds or you roll it over spikes, boom, insta-flat ball. And there is nothing worse than flat balls. You stop! Every time you clear a world, three things happen. First, and the most obvious, is that you get to progress to the next world. Whoa, beating a stage lets you go on to the next stage? How about that shit? Second, and probably the least overwhelming, is that with each crystal that's returned, the world clears up a little more. You know, it's nice to see that all of your hard work is having a positive effect at least. Lastly, clearing stages unlocks new cheats that you can learn. You can learn them from Chuck the Cheating Chicken, who's over here swinging away at this tree. You walk up to him and... Um, excuse you. So, anyway, you walk up to the chicken and he... Damn, Chuck the Cheating Chicken, what the hell did you eat? Oh man, that was foul. Joking aside, that's how he teaches you the cheats. Each cheat is a series of eight C button inputs on the pause screen. Each direction has a corresponding sound effect. A burp, a fart, a hiccup, or a... There isn't much more to say about how this game progresses, besides how you take the ball from platform to platform, solve little puzzles in between, and maybe fight some enemies. Truthfully, it's a little underwhelming. The concept is cool though, so I guess it balances out, somewhat. At least the worlds you explore are alright. The next world, Carnival, has some interesting enemies. Like, look at this guy. What the fuck is that? Oh my god, are you okay? See, this elephant just wants to help you out. He holds onto the ball for you and follows you around. Isn't that nice? Can you bring it over here? Come here. Come here. Oh no. Oh my god. Did you see what happened to the elephant? That'll teach you to take my ball, you gigantic piece of shit. Aw, oh, dude, these guys got like rock star shades? Dead. Holy shit. Holy shit, is that chicken juggling? Whoa, dude, look at him go! He just... He, he, whoa. That's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life! Hey, did he just throw an egg at me? What the hell? What the hell? What the, the hell? What the, what, the, what the hell is going on? Ah, okay, that is enough of that. <sighs> Four-man function. I like it. Really, guys? Okay, never mind. These enemies are assholes. Carnival has no saving grace whatsoever. It doesn't help that these levels don't really feel all that well thought out. They feature a variety of Carnival-style games in between some wildly laid out platforming. Combine that with the controls and- No. Wait. I said I wasn't gonna do it. I said I wasn't gonna do it. I said I wasn't gonna do it. Okay, so it goes without saying, but out of all the worlds in this game, Carnival is my least favorite. I hate the way the music sounds, I don't like the obstacles, the swinging pirate ships are the worst. Well, at least we won't have to see those again. Oh wait, I told a lie. Out of all the worlds, I enjoyed these stages the least. Maybe it's because I really don't like carnivals or circuses all that much. Okay, now that is the creepiest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. I want out! Other worlds will have you exploring through the high seas with a pirate theme. Uh, wait a minute. Two different water worlds? Well, no. In pirates, only the first stage is water themed. Still though, that's like going to another doctor for a second opinion. Anyway, other worlds include prehistoric, or PG Jurassic Park as it were. There's the Fortress of Fear, aka obligatory horror scene, and the tackly named Out of This World, or space. In prehistoric, you start out on an ice level. Oh, come on, guys! What, all the water-themed levels weren't enough? You had to go and throw in an ice stage, too? I bet you're the kind of people that have to uppercut a kitten before you can go to bed at night. You think you're better than the rest of us, don't you? The stage does have its fair share of frustrations that come with the environmental territory, but it's not as bad as it could be. There are some neat mechanics, like when Glover rolls the ball around, it becomes a snowball. Gotta watch out in the next few stages, though. There are some lonely dinosaurs with handbags who... Uh, I'm sorry. Did she just grab her purse, shriek, chase me, 
and then glomp me? <laughs> you guys remember glomping? Fucking dark ages of anime conventions? The standout enemies are these little dinosaurs right here. So ferocious. The bosses of each world are mostly pretty bland and unimaginative. They each follow suit with the theme of the world they live in, sure, and their mechanics are okay, but none of the bosses really stand out, except maybe prehistoric. Yeah, it's just another frozen dinosaur from the Ice Age. But you fight this boss by slapping your ball down a cliff, like you're bowling for dino or something. It's pretty fun. What about the rest? A killer clown in carnival that's fought using overdone slapstick jokes? Pirate monkeys that steal your ball in the pirate ship levels? Giant killer robots in space. And guess what? This is the final boss. The only thing you have to do is to defeat the giant robot that this dumb idiot's in. In a game based in a fantasy setting where magic is the cause of all the world's problems, why wasn't I in an epic magic duel to the death? But the worst boss in the game, the head honcho of holy shit, the biggest offender of cliched laziness is the boss of Fortress of Fear. I'll give you three guesses. Psych! It's Frankenstein's monster! One of my deepest memories with this game growing up is that I could never figure out how to beat this boss without cheating. No matter how hard I tried, I simply could not figure it out. But you know what? Maybe now's my redemption. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so I can climb up these things, but uh, they don't really lead anywhere. I can see the ball switch across the way, but how am I supposed to actually get there? This Glover switch doesn't really do anything. Why is it there? Ugh, damn it! This boss fight is ridiculous. I need to get the ball up there. Shit! This asshole can just pop the ball without any second thought. Damn it! Could you please excuse me for a moment? Ah! This boss sucks! Wait, I can ground pound these? Oh, I see. It shocks Frankenstein's monster. And I can make a new path to get up to the button. Okay, just need to carefully- GOD DAMN IT! Okay, trying again. Shit is relentless. <sighs> I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm not fine. God. Damn. The lightning. Okay, fuck this. I don't have the patience for this anymore. We're cheating. Let's get low gravity on, boomerang ball on, and you eat 50,000 volts and get fucked! Yeah, he's dead, but you know what? Even with cheats on, it was still quite the ordeal. And do you want to know why? It's because these controls suck ass. The ball bouncing has a serious delay to it. When you tap the button to bounce the ball, it won't bounce until Glover has reached the peak of his jump. So, if you bounce the ball, but don't need to bounce it anymore, too bad, you're bouncing. This has killed me more often than I care to count. Ugh, god damn, shitting, bricks. Jesus Christ! This problem is especially terrible in low gravity situations. Yeah, I cheated there to use low gravity, but out of this world has that shit naturally. I wonder what would happen if I put the low gravity cheat on while in low gravity. Even worse is if you need to stand on the ball for any reason. Look, I'm trying to bounce the ball onto the platform. I hit the button to bounce, but it's delayed. So I throw the ball into the water. But because it's deep enough that Glover stands on the ball, my controls get reversed. Because for whatever reason, they decided that, hey, if Glover's standing on the ball, we should reverse the controls. Why? Who knows? It's like they programmed the controls based around which direction Glover is facing. Look here. I don't know why I was standing on the ball as this elevator was coming out of the water, but I hold forward because I want to continue forward and- HOLY SHIT! This problem is amplified when using a speed spell, like in Stage 3 of Atlantis. I'm hauling ass, hauling ass, hauling ass, then I get to the water section and oh god, oh god, oh my god! Ugh! Dumbass starched mitten. I know it just looks like I'm playing like ass, but I swear, I was trying my hardest the whole time. This whole experience just makes me want to pee vinegar. There are just little things that they could have changed to make the experience so much better. But you know what? It's Glover. I can't think of any other games nearly as uniquely cliched as this one. And it must have had enough of a following to warrant a sequel. Or at least the beginnings of one. Yes, once upon a time, we were promised Glover 2. You can even find a prototype ROM online. It has some playability to it, but the game itself is not complete. Long story short, the company that was tasked with making this game ended up taking a massive financial hit. So Glover 2, among other games they were developing at the time, met an early end. Uh, so I decided to take a look at the footage that you could find online just to see what the game would have been like. And I have to say, holy shit, this looks way better. Like, almost comparable to other games of its type. Almost. 
Banjo-Kazooie and Donkey Kong 64 were both significantly better, but they were also completed and released, so that's why I'm saying almost comparable. Glover can use objects in his environment as balls for whatever problems and puzzles he's faced with. His goal in this game is to restore a spellbook for the wizard so that he can stop cross-stitch aka this big dumb idiot. There are a bunch of levels for you to explore, but again, it's not a fully playable game. The one thing you'll notice that is missing is the distinct lack of music. I've been using music from the first game here. Well, color me impressed. Glover 2 looks like it would have been cool. Around the time it was set to release, though, it would have been going up against games like Castlevania, Donkey Kong 64, and Rayman 2. And out of these four, Glover 2 looks like it probably would have easily been considered the worst. But looking back, I almost wished it'd come out anyway. If for nothing else, the novelty of having it. It's kind of funny in a way. An incomplete beta, proof of concept demo of a game looks far and away more appealing than the actual completed Glover game that we have. Now, that's not to say that there was nothing good about Glover 1, but I'm almost a little upset that we never saw Glover 2. It's just not fair! Glover deserves the chance to prove that he can have an awesome game in the year 2018. Someone give the guy a hand, or a glove, whatever. Someone needs to pick the pieces of this project up. We need this Nintendo 64 game to come out. Someone get Rareware on the horn. Tell them we have a Nintendo 64 emergency. So when's the Switch port coming out? Hey guys, I'm not dead. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you hated it, go ahead and give it that thumbs down. Otherwise, give it the thumbs up. Let me know you liked it. Get subscribed if you're new around here. And uh, go ahead and check out some of our other videos. But yeah, the viewer comment question this time is which N64 platformer was the best and why? So go ahead and tell me in the comment section below which one you like the best and what about it makes it your favorite. But yeah, anyway, thank you guys once again so much for watching. Stay awesome. Don't do anything that I wouldn't do, and I will catch you next time.